Hello everybody and welcome to this video on AQA English Language Paper 2. Now the November Resit results came out last week and with them the examiner's reports. In today's video I'll take you through some of the key points from the exam reports for 2019 from both the November and the June exams. If you've seen my animated videos you'll know that question 2 is about inferring or interpreting meaning. One good approach is, for example in a question about summarising differences, to find a point of difference, back it up with relevant quotations, and then ask yourself, given that this is the difference, what does this lead me to realise about what I've been asked to focus on? That last bit is where the inference comes in. However, what I want to focus on for this video is how the June 2019 report gave a helpful tip on how you might achieve this. It said, Encouraging students to write in detail is an approach well worth adopting, as it can often be the means of moving up a level. For example, a student working at a level 2 might typically attempt to make one inference and then move on to make a separate point. However, by focusing and commenting further on the same point, the student is more likely to provide the explanation they need to meet the criteria for clear at level 3. By the same token, a student working at level 3, by engaging in more detail with the same point and looking to extend and develop their comment with further inferences, is in a better position to move into level 4. Coaching students in the patience required to add depth and detail to their responses can only be a positive way forward for all abilities. OK, so that's great, but remember, as an 8 mark question, you're only going to spend 10 minutes or so on question 2, but those points you do make in that time should be covered in detail. Question 3 is the language analysis question in paper 2, and the key point here is to contextualise your comments. Let me give an example of what I mean by that. One of the past papers had some colour imagery in the source. For example, let's say the description was of a car as white. Now that's not what it was. I don't give away specifics about the papers because you're likely to sit them for your mocks. But with that as an example, many students jumped on the colour white and wrote things like the car is white because it's innocent or because it's pure or because it's angelic or because it's fragile. And you can see what's happening here. Students were using what they knew already about colour imagery but not really thinking about the extract itself. This type of one-size-fits-all approach to language analysis does not support students in making clear, contextualised, specific comments on the effects of writers' choices of language. In other words, you can't just go into the exam with preconceived ideas about language and its effects. The effects you write about should be specific to the source you're analysing. With question 4, we know it's about the writer's viewpoints and perspectives, and it's important to identify not just the perspective, but the method used to present it. Again, I go through that in my videos on this question. A great approach here for this question is this. Your first step is, what are the attitudes? Your second step is, what methods are used to present the attitudes? And step 3, analysis of why those methods are used. When it comes to question 5, form is important. Now, again, this is something I go through in my videos, but it came up in the November report. The report stated that the range of forms expected of students in response to this task in question 5 is relatively limited, and it's therefore anticipated that students will make some attempt to adapt the tone, style, and register of their writing to match the audience, purpose, and form in the task. Whilst many students were able to do just that, there were many examples of students writing in the wrong form. Some evidence of being aware of the correct form and adapting the style appropriately to the task is required to reach the higher marks. Now I do have a video on form, which I'll link at the end of this video. Now there was another thing in question 5. Students are not required to cover every thread in the statement in their response. Selecting one or two threads can lead to a clearer argument. For example, let's look at a sample question 5, and again, this wasn't the one from the exam. School uniform has no place in modern education. It's old-fashioned, expensive and uncomfortable. Its excessive price puts parents under extreme financial pressure, and it does not prepare students for the future workplace. Write a letter to your head teacher in which you argue for the abolition of school uniform. Now in that question, you would not have to write one section about uniform being old-fashioned, then another about it being expensive, another about it being uncomfortable, another about the financial pressure, and finally a section on it not preparing students for the future workplace. 
The November 2019 report stated that students who were able to offer extended ideas, particularly if they became more complex as they developed, did better than students who tried to cover every single thread of the question and in doing so were unable to write in depth. So I hope you found this video useful. Do pick up my revision guide to English language. It's just past 300 reviews on Amazon today. It is also a bestseller and it's available for £6.99 paperback on Amazon, £3.99 Kindle edition, £3.99 ebook at mrbruff.com. Here are links to other videos. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching.